Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. And our first story today is a rattling mixture of Karen store and electric scooter. So let's get started. Lady runs over my foot because I wouldn't fetch motor oil for her. I keep my keys on a lanyard, and I usually wear it around my neck because it's easier to grab it and go when I need to get my car going again. And I guess because it's blue, a lot of people think it's an employee tag. Cast. Me, angry lady is AL, confused worker is CW, and my hero is MH. I had just gotten off work, so I was wearing a black shirt with my company logo on it and a pair of black jeans and black shoes. I had my purse sitting on my lap and my lanyard around my neck. I was waiting to pick up a pile of Christmas gifts and was exhausted from work. So I was pretty much dozing in this chair they had in their pickup area. This is where I get spotted. And that was when I heard it. Hey, yo, wake up, lazy girl. The sharp, angry voice. And I opened my eyes to see a woman who, if I hadn't heard her speak, would have thought she was a sweet old granny. She had on this white and green striped shirt, a pair of jeans, and lots of necklaces with her gray hair pulled back in a ponytail and cute little bangs. She had three of those cheap little necklaces that you find at kids' birthday parties around her neck. Me. What? I was, like, half awake. Hey, yo, you need to help me out now. Get off your lazy butt and help me. Me. What are you talking about? She paid my question no mind. Go and get me motor oil. What? No, go get it yourself. A.O. is now furious. My son said that our car needs oil, and I'm not going all the way across the store for it. Do your job and go get it. The auto center was pretty far away, but the motor cars, from what I've seen, are pretty fast. So it's not like she had to walk. Me. One, I don't work here. I don't have to listen to you. Two, the employees here aren't dogs. They won't go fetch for you. A.L. is shouting, you don't talk to me like that. Go get my oil. And then I want to speak to your manager. Me. I don't work here. I remembered the lanyard and took it off to show her it only had my keys and that it had a local college's name on it since I got it at a job fair at school. This isn't from the store. A.L. refusing to look at my lanyard. No, that's bullcrap. Do as you're told or I'll drag you to your manager myself. She grabbed my arm and tried to roll along with me, but... I didn't want to deal with it, so I ran and pulled my arm away with what little energy I had from my mini-nap I took off running. She tried to follow me, but was able to weave my way through a few of the clothes racks and hid from her as she shouted at me. I roamed the store a bit, looking for junk I probably didn't need but could use, mostly avoiding her, even made my way to the auto center and picked up a tire pressure gauge since mine had broken. I found myself in the craft aisle and had at this point stuck my earbuds in because there was a screaming kid in the area. I'm the oldest of six, and I work in a restaurant, as well as babysit. You can only take so much angry child. This also meant that I couldn't hear anything. So I'm staring at some paints when I see her out of the corner of my eye. At least her cart. She's really close to me, and before I can step away, she ran over my freaking foot. I don't know if any of you have ever had your foot run over by a motor cart, but it freaking hurts. It's not a very heavy piece of machinery, apparently, about 25 pounds according to Google, but it hurts when that weight's on your bony as F foot, especially with the 120 pounds this woman was adding to it, and the fact that I wasn't ready for this. So I screamed. I was in shock, and it felt like she'd shattered my foot, especially when her back wheels went over it again, and I screamed again. I had to sit down on one of the shelves and rip my shoe off, trying to alleviate some of the pain, while the A.L. was yelling at me. A.L. That'll teach you to disrespect a customer, you little bee. Now go get my motor oil. For the last effing time, I don't work here. And you'll be lucky if I don't press charges on you. Finally, an actual employee, C.W., came jogging around the corner wearing a vest that had the logo on the corner and his name tag clipped to his chest. He looked entirely confused, which made sense. There was a crying 19-year-old taking off her shoe while this woman sat in a motor cart screaming at her. CW, are you okay, ma'am? He came over to me first as I was pulling off my sock. My foot was swelling. There was a little blood because my toenail had dug into my foot and cut it. AL, I need your manager. She should be fired. CW looked at me, confused. Me, trying to catch my breath, starting to cry. I have the worst time stopping. She, she... She ran, 
AL started shouting again. She wouldn't get my motor oil. Get me your manager. The worker looked like he didn't know what to do. He had one person sobbing and sounding like she was choking. I do a weird gasping thing when I'm trying to catch my breath. It's hard to explain. While another was screaming at him. That's when she came in. My hero. The mother of the screaming child from before who'd apparently been screaming because he fell down. Don't believe that for a second. Mostly since I heard, want it, but I digress. She looked angry for me. M.H., what the hell's the matter with you? She was pointing at A.L. Why the hell would you run over some random girl's foot? She's, she's an employee. She needs to learn not to ignore customers. She doesn't even have a name tag, you idiot. She's wearing a uniform for another company. What the hell made you think she worked here? She is wearing a name tag. Look. She reached over and yanked my lanyard off my neck, holding it out to M.H. like she won or something. See? M.H. snatching my lanyard and showing it to her. Does that say Walmart to you? A.L. finally got a good look and realized they were just keys, and the letters on the lanyard spelled out the initials of the college on it. She turned white. M.H. turned to C.W. Get your manager and a first aid kit. Now! She sounded furious. C.W. ran off, looking a little relieved to have a direction to run into, and M.H. began to do the mom thing where she examined my foot and talked to me in a nicer voice. A.L. tried to scoot her way out of the store, but was blocked by the greeter. She was trying to take the motor cart, which is a big no-no. The manager came and asked if I wanted police to get involved or if I needed an ambulance. I said no. I just want to get my things, an ice pack, and go. They let me sit in that comfy chair in the pickup waiting area and gave me a 50% discount on my pickup stuff, letting me take the stuff I'd already picked up when I was walking around for free. I waited until the swelling in my foot had gone down and watched the crap storm as A.L. tried to convince the manager that I was his insubordinate employee and that I needed to be fired. He instead banned her from the store and told her if she ever came near his employees, she'd get the police called on her. M.H. got her husband to take the kids home and come back for her and sat with me to make sure I was okay and could get home. It wasn't my driving foot, so I could drive okay, and I was able to limp my way to my car. My foot was a fun shade of black, purple, and a little blue for a little while, but my mom and stepdad, both in the medical field, don't think it's broken. It's been sore, but I probably won't end up taking it to the doctor. Best Christmas gift I ever got, though, was watching the angry lady get her motor cart turned off and watch her go off, jumping around and stomping. And our second story. Go to college, or you'll end up like him. Little backstory of me that'll come in handy later. After I graduated college, I went back home in search of a job since my two internships failed to materialize since they weren't typical internships. I coached college hockey two years for my internship. I picked up the first job I could at the beginning of the summer to make some money to save for when I found a big boy job and possibly had to move. I started working at a very high-end resort in overnight housekeeping. I had three degrees from college and even made the dean's list most semesters, but here I'm working as a lowly housekeeping attendant. After about three months of doing this work, I was approached by the front desk manager who'd seen me out and about being overly friendly to everyone and always having a smile on my face. I was a pretty average employee, not exceptional, but not the worst. The night auditor was leaving and they needed someone to take his place. I accepted his offer and transferred to the front desk after giving housekeeping my two weeks notice. Meanwhile, I'm still looking for a job in sports management. A year goes by as the night auditor before a supervisor role opens up at the front desk and I apply to get the position. Five years later and working my butt off by being PM supervisor and manager on duty five or six days a week has finally paid off. Our biggest competitor gave me a call since I had my profile on LinkedIn and they were looking for their own GSM. My GSM had been there for seven years and his boss had been at our place for 20 years. They weren't going anywhere and I really needed to make more money, but I was no longer looking for a job in sports because I finally found my true calling, guest services at resorts and hotels. The new resort brought me in for an interview, and after about a month, I got the job there as their GSM. There was also an understanding my boss was going to be retiring soon, so I would also be groomed for her position. Fast forward one year, I'm now the director of guest services at a huge multi-billion dollar resort. I started off my hospitality career scrubbing toilets at 3 a.m. because you got to start somewhere to get where you want to go. 
Two months as the DOGS, we had this pretentious group in-house that treated all the staff like crap, belittled anyone that they were able to. So I'm walking down the hallway and I hear a lady who has the I want to speak to your manager haircut screaming at a room attendant because she didn't get bath towels when she wanted them. As I approach closer, the mother turns to her 14-year-old daughter and says, this is why you go to college, so you don't turn out like this dumb butt. Not only did this make my blood boil, because it's a really crappy thing to say someone, but this housekeeper is one of our best on staff and one of my friends. I confront the guest and ask her if everything is okay because I heard some yelling and I could see our housekeeper visibly upset. She said she didn't get her towels and she didn't have time to mess around with our incompetent staff. I grabbed two towels off the housekeeper's cart, pushed her cart aside and placed them in the guest bathroom. The guest pretentiously stated that it was a good thing that I was there to help because I clearly had an education. I told the guest I hope they enjoy the rest of their stay and told her to never talk to our staff that way again. As her face started to change to, but I want my pony now, I looked over at her daughter and told her, I run the entire front of the house of this resort. I graduated from college with three degrees, but you have to start somewhere. I started off cleaning bathrooms at a hotel when everyone else was sleeping. One day, the person helping you may be your boss someday. I gave the pretentious mom my business card and said if she ever has any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me with any comments, questions, or concerns. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.